Hey folks, it's Ron with Off Road Tracks, um, and this is my wife Debbie. Sorry, uh, she would be a better looking one to do the video, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Uh, this morning <laughs> we're getting ready to do our ride. Um, kind of overcast, 40s, but we're in the middle of January, so what do you expect? Um, I'm gonna show a little bit. People have been asking about what devices to use for navigation, so we're gonna talk about that a little bit this morning, briefly. We'll cover in more detail later, but I wanted to give you an idea of some of the things that we've been talking about on the off-road track site. So let's get started. I'll move around here and Deb can film. All right, so we have uh, a couple things I'll tell you about first. Um, you'll notice that in my vehicle, the mounting, you've got to mount these devices. No matter which device you're going to use to navigate and track, uh, you want to find a solid foundation for your mount and you want to find something that is not going to be um, intrusive for your view and I've got a lot of stuff up here I don't drive with but I'm doing that to, to demonstrate this to everyone to show you so let's talk about it so you can definitely track with a phone there are plenty of apps and I see a lot of people doing that and that's fine you can track with your phone um, limitations of that um, if you use your phone for video, if you use your phone for photos, uh, any type of communication, um, that kind of ties it up. But the good thing about it is it does have obviously a cell phone signal. Um, you just have to make sure again that the app that you have, you have maps that are downloaded resident so that it'll run once you lose your cell phone signal and make sure that that phone has a GPS receiver. Otherwise when you get out of cell phone range, again it's not going to do you any good. So we've talked about that before. Let's move on to the second option. Second option, and I've used this successfully in the past, it's primarily what I've used. This is a Surface Pro tablet uh, computer. And this system that I have on the dash, and I really like this system, it's solid for me. It's called, it's by Vector Off-Road. As you can see, it's, I can shake the Jeep with this thing. It's like a grab handle, but you use the RAM mounts on it, um, and you, they have RAM mounts for everything. So you see I've got the RAM mount for the phone. The suction cup mount is a good way to go. It's very solid. Uh, the RAM mount works for me for other applications and RAM makes a mount for, and no, I'm not a RAM salesperson. Um, I just like their equipment. This you can move around in any position, keep out of your way. The only thing with the tablet or with the computer is, again, remember, um, this is a Microsoft operated device, this one. So it doesn't have quite as many apps as we call them, although all the programs on a computer are applications. It doesn't have a lot of quick and easy apps as much as these other devices, your phone and your other tablets. Um, the other thing with this is it does, this particular one does not have a cell phone card in it. So if I want cell phone service, I would have to tether this with something. It also has a Wi-Fi card, but it needs a Wi-Fi signal. It, uh, so this one, since it can't be on cell phone range, I would have to tether with my phone. Now I'm tying up two devices. But if I'm just using it for mapping in the vehicle, navigating out on a trail, tracking, then I can use a standalone GPS device. Now this one is the Garmin 60. As you can see up here, it's got its own plug. I've used this a lot. The nice thing about this is you can take it hiking. You don't have to have anything else with it. It'll track. You can put resident maps in it. It's got a power cord. Plug into your vehicle cigarette lighter. There's your USB connection. This connected to the computer if your computer or tablet does not have GPS, this is a GPS receiver for you, but it needs a USB connection. They do have some that are Bluetooth. I don't have any with me. This is a Garmin Puck. So this is a GPS receiver, tiny. It also has a USB. So this you can just throw on a dash, very easy to throw on a pocket, and that's a GPS receiver, and will get you a track wherever you're at. We'll find your GPS coordinates. Um, touch screen, yes. The programs that I use through Garmin, like Map Source on this, uh, the touchscreen doesn't work on the screen, you see. So I can touch and zoom in and out, but it's not quite as intuitive and easy as my next option. My next option is my favorite, personally. It's a tablet, okay? This one just happens, happens to be a Samsung tablet. Um, this one I think we only paid a couple hundred dollars for, so fairly inexpensive. I know on the site people talked about uh, tablet stores or resources where you can buy tablets for under $100. Again, remember, you want one with a GPS receiver. If you have wireless card in it too, now you can run it resident. You don't have to have maps loaded. Pick up a cell phone signal, pick up your map and your location. But if it has a GPS receiver, 
you don't need to have a cell phone signal. Now we can run with resident maps that we can download in the apps and programs, and we'll show you how to do that in another session. But I'm just trying to show you the different types of devices. So again, phone, you can use a tablet, computer, or again, you can use strictly a tablet, an iPad. This happens to be a Galaxy Samsung Tab S2. It has a, a phone receiver, uh, uh, and it also has a GPS receiver in it. Um, one more thing I'll mention to everybody is communication. Not going to get into the CB versus ham debate that we've had, but here's a, here's a CB that I like to use. Um, and the reason I like CB is you don't need a license. They're easy to use, easy to hook up. This one plugs into a cigarette lighter and an antenna that I have external. Let's walk around the back of the vehicle, Deb, and I'll show you something here. So as you can see, I've got my antenna mounted out back. And if Deb, if you want to come around here, you'll notice, folks, if you see, and we're going to talk about this again, proper communication setup. This is a braid, um, and this will help you bond your signal. But the other thing I like about it, if you step back here, is I can borrow I can borrow, we've got a Jeeper here, uh, Jesse's with us, but uh, we'll turn that around here in a second. But the other thing I like is I can borrow a CB to someone, they don't need a ham radio uh, license, and then I can give them a magnet mount, which is very strong, to go on their vehicle and hook up. And now we've got extra communication because there's always someone in the group that didn't bring one. Um, let's turn around here, we'll, it's another uh, Jeeper from the Off-Road Tracks group down in Tennessee, taking us Hi. on a ride today. And uh, we're gonna show some video from this ride here after a little while, but this is Ron from Off-Road Tracks, and we'll see everyone soon, take care.